Melting ice caps, rising sea levels, uh, long periods of drought. For years we've been told that modern lifestyles have been contributing to these sort of global events we see around us. And now a group of scientists say that rapid changes are needed if we're to stop global temperatures rising by more than one and a half degrees Celsius. Let's find out what this means for all of us with environmental scientist Angela Terry. Morning to you. Uh, Phil Corbell from the Carbon Literacy Project. Morning, Hi. Phil. And Chloe Andrews, who's an environmental campaigner. And I know that um, all of you are intensely interested in this and campaign on this in, in many ways. Um, Phil, just, just give us an idea because you know this is a far-reaching uh, report, so many countries involved in it. And, and we've talked about this for many, many years. Could this be the thing that actually makes us change? There's no better science than this. Uh, the world's scientific community have come together and it's unequivocal, even after filtering, editing, this is the signal that we just have to act, and the we is everyone. We, we need to get to a stage where we can look our children in the eye and say we've done our bit, because otherwise the cost is too great. Do you think there is a... Has there been a, a sort of change? We, we, we talk regularly about plastics on this programme, and that's, we've seen people change their individual habits on, on that side of things. Angela, what do, you, what do you think? Can we have the same sort of reaction with, with other things like some of the other stuff we're talking about this morning. Yes, definitely. And I hope this report is, is the crossroads where this happens because the public are hugely in support of renewable energy and electric cars and clean energy. Um, so, so what we need now is for that to happen so that we make this transition to zero carbon emissions as fast as humanly possible. Um, Chloe, you're an environmental campaigner. You've been interested in this for a long time. Um, what is it about the report that most worries you, do you think? Um, it's just incredibly frustrating that, you know, we've got all these drastic changes that we need to make now. And there's been this attitude for decades now that, you know, the next generation will sort it out and your young people have got it in hand. Um, when, you know, as Phil was saying previously, you know, we need every single person on board if we're going to tackle this. You know, we need far more support and empowerment from people in positions of power um, in order for us to tackle this. Um, so, yeah. It's... What sort of change have you made to your own sort of lifestyle? Give us an idea, because you know, people always yeah. love examples and they, things that they can do themselves. Yeah, so personally, um, I started with reducing the carbon impacts of my diet, so eating more plant-based foods and eventually going vegan, uh, trying to fly less. Uh, but I realised after a while that, you know, it's much more impactful to try and make play, uh, make changes, say, in your work environment or in your local community, getting more people on board, trying to effectively communicate um, climate change action in a positive way to the public and people around you. Do you think it comes down, um, Angela, in some ways to um, all of us realising that unless we do something, actually it will have an impact on our lives, our children's lives, kind of making it a personal Absolutely. So this summer we saw the heat. We saw how uncomfortable that heat was, particularly for vulnerable people. Food prices will be going up next year because of the drought. So those impacts are happening and we've had floods already this year and we're coming into flood season now. So the impacts are already happening in our lives around us uh, in the UK. And obviously they're far worse in some other countries, especially low-lying island nations. So, so the impacts are here, but the good thing is the solutions are here and they are now affordable so we can just get on with it basically. But I, I think to focus too much on doom and gloom can, can paralyse us with fear and the, the low carbon world is such a better world with clean air, more jobs, healthier diets and it's all in reach if we act and I think it's just getting everyone on board. If people can get a carbon instinct and this becomes second nature then we can affect our own actions, but also influence the decision makers. I think that's also a point that quite a few people are making this morning about infrastructures. Uh, that, that's a, a crucial part as well, because you were talking about, you know, the importance of uh, electric cars mm -hmm. for the next generation. Yes. But there's still not that perfect infrastructure there for that. Yes. It's still quite a bind to put a, a charging point at your home. And then for if now. you're making... Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. So if that... But if the infrastructure is there, then I think that would encourage more people to, for example, go electric with their, yeah. with their cars. So in terms of fast charging points, there's already 6,000. So within the next year or two, there'll be more locations for charging an electric car than there are petrol stations. So that transfer is happening. Most people charge at home at night. That's about what 80% of charging is because you're asleep, so it's convenient and it's cheapest way to charge. So, so 
putting a charge point in your home is quite straightforward and there's a government grant to do that as well. And we're talking about that, I mean, one of the suggestions is about um, gas boilers, isn't there, um, that they should be replaced. By what? Uh, if we have fully insulated homes, a couple of electric heaters will keep us warm. So I think home insulation is an easy win, creates loads of jobs, and, and it, we need to do it now. We can't be building non-efficient homes when we're going to have to make them efficient in five, ten years' time. So it's cheaper, better. Chloe, how do you convince... I mean, I don't know whether what your friends are like or those people you're engaging with in your community. What do you say to people who just don't care? I just tell them to give it a go and get involved because there's no better antidote to apathy and, you know, despair than action. And personally, I've just become a far happier person since taking action and doing a bit of research myself. So, yeah, just, just give it a chance and, you know, don't get carried away with all the, you know, sensational headlines that are just created to generate income for, you know, news organisations. You know, there are loads of positive initiatives happening in the world that you can get involved with and read about, which will provide hope and, yeah. OK, um, Chloe, Chloe Andrews, thank you very much. Angela Terry and uh, Phil Corbell, thank you very much. And thanks for everyone as well um, for getting in touch. It is something that we will obviously continue mm. to talk about here on Breakfast.